Unit 6 represents a major change in the direction of the course. Uh, the calculus section is, is over. A lot of the stuff that we're doing with functions and derivatives and maxes and mins and so on, uh, you've got to the end of that stage of the course. Vectors is really a completely different topic. Uh, when I was going to school, there were two different courses altogether. Calculus was its own thing, and algebra geometry was its own thing. And a lot of universities, you'll find that's the same. You'll have a linear algebra, which is more based on what you're learning here, and you'll have a calculus, which is more what we learned for the first half of the of the course. Now, a vector is uh, a little bit. It takes a little bit to get your head around exactly what a vector is uh, and and what they enable us to do. So let's start slow, and I'm, I'm going to start with the idea that we don't know anything about them. And, um, you know, if you've taken physics, you may already have a very good sense of how vectors work and so on. But by the end of our class, we will be moving, you know, we just move in a different direction than physics. They talk a lot about, um, you know, uh, situations and how things would, would act and you know, we, we tend to, to talk more about, we move into three dimensions, and we talk about the algebra of three-dimensional objects, and, and that sort of thing. So it's a lot of new material, even if you have taken physics. If you've taken physics, it's probably an advantage for the first, you know, five lessons or thereabouts. And after that, I really, I don't think it's that big a deal. Now, uh, first thing, let's understand that, you know, some terminology. So... When we use the word scalar, we are talking about a number. For example, the, the number 5 is a scalar. It simply describes a size. right? Uh, it does not include a direction. Now, on the other hand, uh, if we're talking about a vector, okay, a vector has a magnitude, but it also is, it has a direction. So, you know, again, We've talked in the past about distance versus displacement. Distance is simply how far have you traveled. My car, for example, has an odometer that reads you know, 90,000 kilometers. It doesn't say in what directions I traveled. It just says I've traveled 90,000 kilometers. My displacement, however, which let's define as how far I am away from or how far my car is away from its garage, is currently zero right? because that's where it's sitting right so displacement is the idea of how far are you from the origin distance is also how far are you from you know the origin or from where you were or whatever but distance doesn't track going backwards whereas displacement does displacement tracks where you are right moving forward and backward distance simply says you know how much raw distance have you covered so certain things, when we were to talk about them precisely, we need not just a quantity, but also a direction. So my displacement is one centimeter at an angle of 30 degrees, uh, or five kilometers north, or my velocity is 80 kilometers an hour to the west, or whatever. Okay. Now, how do you represent a vector? Uh, obviously, you can do it in words. You can say five kilometers at an angle of whatever. You can also draw a vector. Now a vector when you draw it is a line segment with an arrow at the end. Okay, And the size of the vector basically indicates its magnitude. So if, let's draw an, an example vector here. So I'm going to just switch to the vector tool. So it's under this like uh, line tool. So I'm going to draw a vector that connects negative 10 to positive 10 like so okay and it just created this vector here which it called 10 10 don't worry too much about why it's calling it that we, we can discuss that later but you can see what it is it has a certain length and it points in a certain direction that's a vector now one thing I want to say right off the bat that I think a lot of people find confusing about vectors is that this vector that I just drew has nothing to do with its start point or its end point. The vector is, if you, if you like, the instructions for
for how to get from A to B, but it has nothing to do with where A and B are. For example, let's say I drew a vector over here, and I drew the exact same thing, right? Do you notice that vector U and vector V are identical? So where the vector is located is not important, but the length of it and the direction of it are important. Okay, so this vector u and this vector v are the same thing. They're like saying this is the number 5 and this is the number 5. The fact that they start and end in different places is irrelevant because the vector is not, you know, is not a location in space. It's not a location. It's simply a path. Okay, so if I tell you, for instance, uh, you know, get up, walk three steps forward, and two steps to the left, and all of you actually did that. All of you just did the same vector, even though none of you are in the same place, right? So the vector is simply the instructions. It's kind of like a function in that way, okay? I think people find this confusing because they look at vector u and vector v and they think that they're different because one of them's over here and one of them's over there. Uh, not, not the case. Right? They are both representations of what it would be like to move 10 units to the right and 10 units up. Okay. So you can draw a vector. If you draw a vector, obviously you need an arrow on one side and you need, uh, you need the length of the vector represents its magnitude. So the longer the vector, the bigger its magnitude. When you draw a vector with a symbol, you draw it, uh, you draw it like you would draw a line segment, but this really, this really is an error. It needs, uh, you need a little, uh, sorry, I forget where to find this thing. You need this thing on top of it. Okay, so that little arrow on top of something means you're talking about a vector. So if you, if you write AB, for example, AB, you're telling me the line segment that connects A to B. If you write AB with a vector symbol on top, you're telling me the instructions for how to get from A to B. You would need to walk so f so long at such an angle. Okay, that's really what it should like. This is this is kind of a typo. Okay, so I just, just kind of strike that. Uh, you can write them in coordinates. Uh, we're going to learn more about that later in the week. We're kind of cutting Unit Six a bit short and focusing on Unit Seven. So. Uh, we'll get to this quite quickly. Okay, so the beginning of the vector is called the tail, and the the end is called the head. So you know, we sort of like tip to tail or uh, head to tail, right? Uh, you can use it in in symbols. So you could say vector v or vector u. Again, you just make sure you have the little vector on top of it. The arrow tells you its direction. The length of the arrow is a positive real number. Of course, you can't have a negative length. Uh, it gives the magnitude or the size of the vector. Okay. There are a number of symbols you can draw. Again, these symbols really do need the uh, the arrow on the top of them. They they have to have an arrow, or you're not talking about a vector. And again, I I, I am marking for that. So make sure if you mean a vector, you write the arrow on the top. Now, if you see a vector with the uh, let's just replace this. So sorry. Uh, I'm in the subscript. Is that what the problem is here? <laughs> okay, I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, so let's just replace this with vector AB, right? And with the magnitude of AB. And let's go A. Sorry, let's do this thing with the. Uh, Get the feeling I'm not doing this right, but for now it'll have to do. I'll look into it when I have some time. Okay, so if you see things with an absolute value sign beside them, it simply means magnitude only. The magnitude is 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 does not have a direction. It's just the length of the vector, and it's always non-negative. So, for example, if what you're looking at is here, and I asked you to find this, the absolute value of u, which really we're going to be saying magnitude of u. If I ask you to find the magnitude of u, you would simply reply it's 50, because that's the size of this, that's the size of this vector, 50 kilometers per hour. The direction that it's pointing in, the northeast part, 
is part of the vector, but it is not part of the magnitude. Okay? So remember, a vector consists of two things. A vector consists of a magnitude, which is just a value, and a direction. Okay? If you strip away the direction, you've created a scalar. So for example, if we do the magnitude of, oh right, I just remembered how to do this. Sorry. Right, so you go vec, and then you go, there you go, okay. If I ask you for the magnitude only, the magnitude of V is a scalar. It is not no longer a vector because you have stripped away its direction. Okay, so uh, that, that's good to know. So, so V with a line on top of it is a vector, but if you see the absolute value bars or the magnitude bars around them, then you see you know you're looking at just the scalar, just the uh, just the length. Okay, equal, opposite, and parallel vectors. Two vectors are equal if their magnitudes and directions are the same. So again, th your intuition is going to be they have to be on top of each other. They do not have to be on top of each other. In this case, vector u and vector v are perfectly identical even though they are not on top of each other. Okay, for example, if I go u take away v, it gives me zero. How could two things subtract and give you zero unless those two things are the same? Right? So these two vectors are identical because they have the same magnitude, right? They have the same length, and they point in the same direction. Now notice, if I change this one to make it over here instead, they no longer are the same because this one has a different direction and a different length for that matter. Okay? But if the two vectors point in the same way, and are the same length, they are equal, perfectly equal. So two vectors are equal if their magnitudes and directions are the same. Really important. Again, it's an easy thing to understand, but it's an easy thing to, uh, to misunderstand as well, right? Now, two vectors are opposite if they have the same magnitude, but are opposite in direction. So in my case, right, I have a vector here that connects C to D. Let's change this around so that this now is a vector that connects D to C. So in other words, I have it pointing now, uh, you know, so it's the same length, obviously, but it's pointing the opposite way. And now, if I add them together, I get zero. So you can see that if you add two opposite vectors together, you're, you're, you're le you go back to the beginning, you go back to where you started. This should make sense to you because a vector is a set of instructions. If I told you to start at point A and walk northeast, and then I said walk southwest according to this diagram, you would simply end up where you started. Okay? So two vectors are opposite if they have the same magnitude but opposite direction. So one thing you can write here right off the bat is that let's just let's write this down as an equation uh, vector a b is the opposite and again the sign for opposite you know it's a negative sign is the opposite of vector b a okay and that the here is like your first sort of vector rule right that if you have two vectors uh, and you change their orientations you change the direction Obviously, I'm not changing the magnitude because to get from A to B is the same length whether you walked from A to B or B to A. But if you make it negative, you have changed the direction. You flip the arrow from this side to that side. Now, two vectors are parallel if their directions are either the same or their directions are opposite. But not necessarily. They don't have to be the same magnitude. So here, U and V are parallel. AD, excuse me, AB is parallel to DC, is parallel to CD, is parallel to BA, right? So parallel is kind of like, a, is similar to equal, but they don't have to be the same size. They just have to point in the same direction or in the perfectly opposite direction. So, uh, you know, AD is parallel, actually not AD, I did it again. AB is parallel to BA and to DC and to CD. Okay, all of those things would be parallel to one another because they're all like going in this same this same sort of angle. Whether you're going up and right or down and left, it doesn't matter. 
Now the angle between two vectors is always, whenever I say the angle between two vectors, what I mean is if you were to draw them so that they originated from the same place, what would be the acute angle that joins them together? Okay, so let me let me try to demonstrate this with uh, with another idea. So let's say we were to let's draw a couple of random vectors. Okay, so here's vector. Uh, so let's draw a vector over here. So let's say from here to let's make them a bit easier. So from there to there is pretty easy, and then maybe from here to there. So what would happen if you added these two vectors together, or what would happen? How would I get the angle in between these two vectors? So here's where, if you understand the point I was trying to make before, okay, uh, you will see that vector u and vector v have do not start in the places that I drew them. They are simply the instructions. So watch what happens when I when I type u plus v. Okay, uh, let's actually that's a bit too complicated for now. Let's let's draw vector u located at point zero zero. So zero zero plus u. Okay? And let's go vector zero zero that connects to E. Okay? Now vector W and vector U are the exact same in every way. The fact that one starts here and one starts here is completely irrelevant. That that might be relevant in a question, but it's not relevant to the vector itself. The same logic could apply with vector v. We could make a new point O, and then we could say a vector that joins O to O plus v. And you can see that what I've done here is I've created two, you know, I've drawn two new vectors w and a that are perfectly equal to the two I started with. I just moved, I just moved their starting location so that they begin from the same spot. Now when I type, when I click angle, and I go, I click V and I click U, okay, it, it does this for you. It moves you over here and it measures the angle. How did it do that? It did it the same way you and I would do it. It drew the two vectors as if they started together and then found the acute angle in between them. The reason I'm saying acute angle is because there's obviously another angle around the outside of this vector but you're not taking that you're always taking the internal one so for example even if I change let's make this one point the other way what it did here is wrong okay this is not the angle I take what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to take the angle that's acute so I should take the angle that's on the inside here okay and then just so you so you can see uh, that being done Okay, so that's the angle between two vectors. So how do you get the angle between two vectors? Draw them as though they originated from the same point. Write theta in between them, like the short distance, not the long distance all the way around, and then measure theta. And again, obviously we'll come up with ways of measuring theta uh, as, as we go on, but for the time being. If I say the angle between two vectors so that we all know we all do the same thing, that's what it means. Now, how do you describe a vector so that you and I both know what we're talking about? So let's say I drew um, an angle here. So I'm going to make a slider that controls an angle, and I'm going to make a slider that controls a magnitude, and we'll just call the magnitude, you know, m, and we'll say its minimum is zero, its maximum is five. That's fine, and it counts up by point ones. Now I'm going to draw a vector. And just you, don't, you can ignore how I'm drawing it for the time being, but just uh, let's make a point. Oh, you'll learn how to do this. For right now, don't worry about it. So if we draw a vector that that is, uh, let's see, its x coordinate would be cos alpha times m, and its y coordinate would be sine alpha times m. Uh, and I would want to join O to that point. Okay. Now let's zoom in a bit. So here's a vector. You can see that. Uh, oh, I see what's out. Well, that still should have worked. Oh, I see. The M is inside the bracket. Yeah, that's so. Uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Wouldn't really work. Okay, you can see. If I change the magnitude, all it does is just stretch the vector out. Okay? Makes the vector longer or shorter. So here's a vector with magnitude 2. 
right? It has a length of 2. And if you draw a circle that's centered at O with a radius of M, you can see that my vector always has a perfect magnitude of whatever I wanted. So here it has a magnitude of 2. Here it has a magnitude of 3. The angle of the vector just controls, like, where does it point? So we need a... Now you can see, of course, by default, GeoGebra assumes that we are doing it the trigonometry way. We would want to start the vector right here. Unfortunately, we don't do that in vectors. We, you know, Normally, you would start right here and you would do counterclockwise, right? For vectors, you start at the top, which is defined as zero, and then you go clockwise around the clock, right? So if I say draw a vector, let's say magnitude six, or let's say magnitude four, at a 45 degree true bearing, what I would do is I would draw a magnitude of 4, so let's stretch it out to a magnitude of 4, and then I would change this angle so that the true bearing, which is in between, you know, like the angle it makes with north, basically, uh, is whatever, whatever we wanted. Okay, so um, let's try this a different way so I can, I can make this a bit easier to, to see. So just pause this while I work on it. Okay, so looking at it now, you can see I have a vector with magnitude 4. You know, again, I, the circle has a radius of 4. If you can put the axis back on, you can see it's a 4. Now, when I, if I ask you to draw, let's say, a vector with magnitude 4 with a bearing of 100 degrees. So you would start there, and you would rotate this way 100 degrees. The vector you would draw is this V here. Okay, that's the vector that you would be drawing in that circumstance. Just this one, right? You don't, not the circle, not the dotted line. I'm just, those are just there for your reference, right? So all you would draw is just that vector there. Okay, now this is just a convention. It's just so that when, we, when we're talking about vectors, we can all sort of have a, a common understanding of what we mean. So let's say we wanted to draw a vector magnitude 2 with a true bearing of 270 degrees. So I would start rotating, there's 90, there's 180, and there's 270. So I mean this vector here that's pointing to the left. Okay. So a true bearing starts at north and measures clockwise. So all you have to remember there is start at north and measure clockwise, and it's between 0 and 360. Uh, is all, your answer is always between 0 and 360. Now, another way of interpreting this, another way you should know how to measure angles, is called a quadrant bearing. And it simply measures uh, the angle between the east, west, or north, south line. So what does that mean? It means that instead of, so a true bearing of, let's say, uh, actually, let me do this another way. So it, it means, uh, let, let me just go back to this, and we, we can just look at this for a sec. So let's describe an angle that's like right up here. Okay, you could say that this this vector v is at a 60 degree true bearing. You could also say that this vector is north 60 degrees east. You could say it is east 30 degrees north because you're starting at east. You go 30 degrees towards north, and then that's where you draw the vector. You can see that, like, I, if I drew one down here, so let's draw one. Uh, let's draw um, 135. Okay, 135. I could say is east. So I'm starting at this point east. So let's draw my axis again, so it's easier to see where where I am. So here's east, and then I'm going 45 degrees towards south. Alternatively, I could start at south and go 45 degrees towards east. Okay, so this one, all you're doing, all you're doing here is pick a nearby cardinal direction, north, east, south, west, count the angle towards another direction, and that's it. Okay, and your answer in this case will always be between 0 and 90. Because if it was over 90, you would just go to a different quadrant, right? Okay, so again, good thing to practice. If you do have questions, please please ask them. I know it's a lot of concepts for one day. 
Now the uh, we're gonna finish. Oh yeah. Well, I guess not. Okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, scalar multiples. Now, this is I think probably the most important thing from the day. Not super difficult, but it is something that's going to come back f uh, for quite a while. Two vectors are, are parallel if one of them can be expressed in terms of the other using scalar multiplication. Let's see what happens when I multiply a vector. So let's just... Uh, well, yeah, actually, we can keep this demonstration. It's fine. We'll just get rid of the angles and the... Uh, don't need the angle, we don't need the circle, we don't need the original line, and so on. Actually, sorry, we could use this angle so we can still rotate it. All right. This is this thing that is drawn here is f angle. Uh, let's let's make a new scalar called k. And let's see what happens when we multiply a vector times a scalar. Oh, I see. Uh, it's making them invisible on me. Okay, now here's vector v. Now I'm going to make a new vector called, let's say, uh, let's just do it like this. So, vector Okay, so I'm going to make an equation. A new vector w is k times v. And I'm just going to write it in GeoGebra exactly as I said it. What's k times v? Now, if k is 1, as you know, multiplying something by 1 doesn't change it, right? So w is therefore the same as vector v. If k is 2, then what happens? You get the same direction as vector v, but you get double the magnitude. Okay, let's just change this color so we can see this more easily. Okay. So vector w is the same direction as vector v, but doubled in size. If k is 1 half, then it's half the size of vector v in the same direction. If k is negative, it's, it's parallel to v, but it's now pointing in the opposite way. If k is negative 2, it's pointing the other way and, you know, longer. Okay, so this equation, w equals kv, is really, really important. W equal, or U, you know, whatever, what they've written is U is KV, but let, let's just do it the way I did it. Oh, I see. Right, you can sort of save some time if you... <laughs> so I thought. Okay. W equals KV. If that is true, means... W and V, really I should do it with vectors, W, Vec, and V, Vec, are parallel. And that's the first sort of vector equation that you're going to learn. If you look at these two vectors here, there is no way I could make any K value that would ever change the direction of v. It's always, if you're multiplying it by k, it's, it's always going to be in the same direction. So this and this would fail the condition u equals kv because, you know, they're not parallel. So if you have this, if you know this is true, that means you are they are parallel, and it means there must be some number k that you could stretch v by in order to get w, right? There, there must be some way you can stretch one into the other. There is no way you could stretch this vector into that one because they're pointing in different directions. So these are not parallel and they would fail this condition, okay? Now, a unit vector is another thing that's really important that everybody forgets. Don't forget it. A unit vector means it's the same direction as a vector as another vector but only goes one in that direction. So it's pointed the same way that V is, but it only goes so far as one unit. Okay, so let's let's so you know, if I wanted to draw uh, the unit vector V, right, I would stretch K down all the way down to here 
and now I have a unit vector because this this uh, W that I've drawn right now has a magnitude of one. This is a bit easier to see if we make this like a straight on on a, on a line. So like right now, my magnitude of my original vector V is two. If I were to multiply that two by a point five, right? It would become a magnitude of one, and therefore it would become a unit vector. So what's the formula for making a unit vector? Uh, very simple. One over the vector's magnitude times the vector is the unit is the unit uh, vector. Okay, so right here, the unit vector you can see has a little caret symbol on top, like this, like axon circumflex, and uh, one over the magnitude of the vector times the vector gives you uh, a unit vector. Let's demonstrate that uh, now with a with a random one. So let's say I make up a random vector, and then I'm going to draw. I'm going to I'm going to have it start at zero zero. So I'm going to go O. So vector that joins O to O plus U. So I moved it up there. Now I'm going to do another thing. I'm going to I'm going to say length of v, and what that does is it calculates the length of this vector. It turns it into a scalar. It finds its magnitude, right? Now I'm going to do one over a times v, okay? And then finally I'm going to draw a circle, circle with a magnitude with a radius one. If you look at the thing that I drew, it is a vector in the same direction as my original vector, but its magnitude is only one. How did I do that? I simply took the original vector and did a scalar multiple times one over its magnitude. Remember, its magnitude was 33.85. I just used GeoGebra to find that. Don't worry, you will learn how to do that in time. For the time being, I just want you to think about the concept. Right? So what I'm going to say here in an equation is I'm going to say I've got this backwards, but I'm going to write this equation. A unit vector of v is w. w is the short vector down here. It is a unit vector in the direction of v. It has a magnitude of 1, but it points in the same direction as v. And I got it by following this formula. Okay, So this is your second formula that's important. So, right, so v hat, right, equals, okay, 1 over, why is this all the way over here? Okay, uh, 1 over absolute value v vec times v vec. Okay, that is a really important formula that many people will forget. So don't be the one to forget it. You take 1 over v's magnitude, do a scalar multiple times v to shrink it down, and it becomes a unit vector. And we know, uh, we know that uh, v hat Right, so sorry, v hat eh, uh, has a, is length or magnitude one. Okay. Okay. Now let's do some examples from today. Again, a lot of concepts. You, we will come back to many of these things. Try to try to understand them as best you can. Ask me questions if you want, um, but. Uh, you know, let's see what it is we're actually asked to do for something today. It says, which of the following vectors are equal or opposite? Now, uh, vector x looks like it's opposite to vector a, right? So, equal vectors, I don't see any. Uh, Maybe my screen is like, but it doesn't look like any of them are equal to me. Uh, which ones are opposite, though? I do see some that are opposite. X vec and uh, a, uh, a vec. Okay, that, uh, 
these ones are opposite. Now, another question could be which ones are parallel? So let's say parallel. Okay, which ones are parallel? So a, X and A are parallel, and E and F are parallel, right? So uh, just gonna, I'm not gonna type the vector symbols just because it's taking me too long, but you need to. X and A are parallel, and E and F are parallel, okay? Now here's a really, really, really good exercise, okay? Make sure you know how to do this kind of question. It says, name the vectors equal to LX, okay? Which ones are equal to LX? Okay, which ones would be identical? YL would be identical. Okay, NM would be identical. Negative XL would be identical. Negative LY and negative MN. All of those vectors would be identical because of the way this triangle works, right? Like the, all these little things are parallel and all that stuff. If they weren't parallel, it wouldn't work. I'm not eyeballing this, right? I know that this one here is parallel to this one, is parallel to this one, and they're all the same length. Let's look at Zn. Z, to get from Z to N, what could you do? You could go from N to Y. You could go from M to L. You could go the opposite of L to M. You could go the opposite of uh, y to n, or you could do the opposite of n to z. Okay? Lm, we just did, right? It, it would be the, the one we just did above. It's just all the opposites. So to get from L to M, what could you do? You could go from y to n. You could go from n to z. You could go negative zn, negative ny, or negative ml. Finally, ZM, to get from Z to M, you could do negative MZ, you could do MX, you could do negative XM, you could do uh, NL, or you could do negative LN, right? This kind of exercise is really, really good to practice because it really reinforces the idea that vector NM is the same thing as vector LX. Even though they're in different physical locations, they are the same vector. Again, try to imagine that all of these have the arrows on top. I just don't want to force you to suffer through watching me typo them all. But you know what I you know what it, what it should look like. Here's another question I love to ask. This is a regular octagon. It means all the oct all the sides are the same length and the angle across each of the vertices is the same. It says, give two examples of vectors that are equal. Okay, so a vector that's equal, FE equals AB. That would be a, a two vectors that are equal. Or, FE equals negative EF. Right, that would work. Okay, vectors that are parallel but not equal, HE, Let's write it in. Let's write it mathematically, okay? I think this one I'm going to actually write the vector things. So, uh, h. I don't know if this will work. Vec. No, it doesn't. Okay, so whatever. So, vector h e is equal to k times vector b c. Okay, so the, remember, how do we write mathematically that things are parallel? We say that there's a k that multiplies one vector and turns it into the other. Now again, you could put the k on he or you could put the k on bc. It doesn't matter. Either, either one is fine. Okay, so there would be some examples of vectors that are parallel. bc is parallel to he. Okay? Uh, you could also just reverse this. You could say eh is parallel to bc. That's fine. EH is parallel to CB or BC, whatever. Another good, another set of these that would work. Okay, another set of parallel vectors. HC is parallel to BA, for example. 
Now the fact that they point in other directions doesn't matter because remember parallel vectors can be opposite too. They can point in the opposite direction. Okay, two vectors that are not parallel but that are the same size, Fe and Ed. Fe and Ed or DC and BC, whatever. I mean, we know that all the outside things are all the same length, so just pick any two of them that are not parallel and then you're good. Okay? Two vectors that are opposite. Okay? So GF, let's let's try GF and uh, CB would be opposite, right? Uh, DC would be opposite to HG. Some vectors that are neither parallel nor equal size. I mean, this is pretty silly, but you know, uh, HE has nothing in common with. Uh, no, sorry, <laughs> not that one. Uh, has nothing in common with BA, for example. They point in different directions, and they H E and B A would be one example. Another example would be uh, G F, let's say, and H D. Uh, right, they don't have anything in common. They're not pointing in the same direction. They're not the same length. Okay, the points uh, A B C D E F G are equally spaced along a line. Name a vector which is equal to. Okay, so let's draw the line first. And then uh, just let me take a quick look. Okay, so we're basically done. Okay, good. So let, let's draw this one, and then you can kind of see what, what, we're, what we're talking about. So five points equally spaced, right? So let's make. Uh, actually, that's a waste of time. Uh, zero, zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, zero. Okay, so there's our five points. They're equally spaced along a line. Get them into Word. Okay. Now, it says name a vector which is equal to 3BD. B to D. Oh, sorry. I have to go to EFG. Oh, okay. I guess it doesn't matter. Try that again. Okay, uh, a vector that is equal to 3BD. Now look, BD, the vector BD, what does it mean? It means go right two units. So the question is, if you were to triple BD, all that that means is go right six units. So how could I go right six units? Well, one easy way to do that would be to AG. So 3, let's write it in proper vector form. 3 uh, space vec BD is equal to vec AG. Okay, so this would be my solution for the first question. B to D is 2 units. If I tripled that, right, it would be 2 units two units, two units. An equivalent vector to 3BD would be AG. Another equivalent vector would be negative GA, right? GA would be another equivalent vector. Another equivalent vector would be six six AB, right? AB, remember, is one unit to the right so how many times would you need to do AB to go six units to the right? Well, you'd need to do it six times. Okay. Next one says one quarter of EA. Okay, so EA is one, two, three, four units left. So let's just uh, think of a good way to do this. I, I really can't think of one. Maybe uh, I make it as a table. kind of keeps it organized. So these are just alternate answers. Okay, EA. What is vector EA telling you to do? Go left four units. So one quarter EA is go left one unit. Now you can think of a million ways to do this. 
GF would work, FE would work, ED would work, CB would work, DC, like no limit to this, right? There's lots of ones that would be equivalent to going left one unit. Okay, 5 over 2 times DF. Okay, DF is a vector that DF is go right 2 units. So 5 over 2 DF would be to go right 5 units. How do you go right 5 units? AF, BG, or negative GB, right? Whatever. Lots of ways of doing that one. I see. Now I could have just stretched this out. I don't know how I made that error, but there you go. Okay, finally, negative 2 AD. What is vector AD telling you to do? It's telling you to go right 3 units. So negative 2 times AD is going to tell you to go left, right? It's going to flip you over, and you go left 6 units. Well, to go left 6 units, there's one obvious answer, which is GA. Another obvious answer is negative AG, right? Either one is fine. Okay? Good exercise. Doing this will really help you understand vectors and how they work. A lot of this stuff is just like, here's a picture, tell me a vector that's equivalent to whatever, right? And just do it, visualize it, draw it, trace it with your pencil, whatever. But get in the hang of understanding this, because the better you are at this, you'll have a much easier time with the difficult stuff later on. Okay, this last part is just asking you to express all these things as a grid. Uh, What is what is it asking? Express A as a scalar multiple of B and C. Well, A is over 1, up 1, whereas B is over 3 and up 3. So let's express it as a scalar multiple. I'm going to write uh, vector A is equal to 1 third crazy. One third <laughs> uh. Let's write it like this. 3a is equal to b, right? If you take a and triple it, you would move 3 in the same direction, and that would make the same thing as b. Now, how do you make the same thing as c? You would go, you would take vector a, and you would you go negative 2 a equals vector C, right? So you'd simply take A, flip it over, and then double it, and you would get vector C, okay? So there's some homework for you to try. Again, please post any questions. These ones that can be difficult to, you know, share your work. Uh, so you'll feel free to take pictures and upload them to the discussion forum. I'm happy to help you work on any of this stuff. Uh, again, questions and talk to each other, right? You're not in it alone. Uh, you know, work with a partner or, uh, or feel free to reach out.